You're listening to Mark of the Maker. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Steiner and you're listening to Mark of the Maker. This is going to be a little conversation about the Tactical Invitational. We'll get there in a minute. We have a couple of folks with me. I have Mr. Michael Birch. Here. And Mr. Sean Kendrick. Hey, hey. All right, and Tom's not with us today, but we're just going to do a little wrap-up from TKI. Um, specifically, I think there's a couple of them, so a couple different TKIs. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, we do need to thank a couple people, all of our friends on Patreon who support us uh, with a little bit of a pledge or donation each month, and we really appreciate that. That helps keep the wheels on the bus turning on this show. So thank you very much. If you'd like to join us on Patreon, go to patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. And you can find us, just search Mark of the Maker, and you'll come across us there. So thanks, everybody, for your help with that. I think Sean's going to thank another friend of ours. Hey, folks. Have you ever wished you could get all of your exotic materials at one easy-to-shop-at location? Well, your wishes have been granted because there's American Metal Exchange. At AMX, you can get all of the exotics you could ever want, and then some. George probably has materials you've never even heard of. So why don't you stop over to AMX Inc. and let George know we sent you. Head over to amxinc.com. That's amxinc.com. Well done. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks, George, for your support of the show. We really appreciate you. Yeah, buddy. Good seeing you in Cali. Yeah. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about, uh, TKI SoCal 2022, right? Mm-hmm. I think some people are scratching their heads a little bit this year, like, wait a second, wasn't there a TKI not that long ago? And they would be correct. Yes. So let's explain that for people. How, what, what's that all about? There was one in Vegas, right? I don't know if it was in January or when was it? Uh, it was Jan or Feb. One of no, the, yeah, it was January, into January, Jan- and... Uh, I actually had forgotten about that one. I thought you were talking about the Nashville one. And I was like, no, I mean this year even. Yeah, yeah. I think there's uh, they're getting settled down and trying to figure out when and how and where and with all the TKIs and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a few. Yeah, but that's not going to be the norm from here on out. I talked to Sako about that. Okay. Yeah. Because I think people were kind of accustomed to one and it happened real early in the year, right? That was sort of the traditional Mm -hmm. thing anyway. Yeah. And that's what it's going to go back to. I gotcha. All right. So this one was in Southern California. So there's a couple ways to get in and out of there. You guys sounds like took different paths to get there, right? Yeah. Uh, Very different. I took the wrong path. (laughs) I took the right one. There you go. Yeah. The, uh, the LAX one. Um, it's the only one I can get into, but during rush hour, it's a long Uber ride and it could be real awkward too. <laughs> the awkward Uber ride. Cause it, mm-hmm. because the ride was so long, uh, no, didn't talk, which is fine, but then no music or anything at all. Just pure silence. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was a time of reflection. <laughs> you had a troublesome spot in your relationship with your Uber driver. I guess I just <laughs> I put my earbuds in. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do something here. Yeah. So why don't you explain that? Because I think you told me a couple minutes ago, Michael. What you took you a long time from the time you left your house to the time you got, I assume, to the hotel. Well, it's a pretty good haul, right? Well, yeah. Springfield, Missouri is not a very big, you know, airport. As air, some people may know. So usually you have to hop in a little puddle jumper or something and get to a real airport. So I got into Dallas, took about an hour and a half, uh, had a layover there, and then it took, oh, two hours and 40 minutes to get to LAX. Then in LAX, you take a, a bus to get to uh, the rideshare area, yeah. you know, but you know, then the rideshare, I mean, it gets there pretty quick, but then it made it, that rush hour time, it sucked. Right. It just, it took so long. Yeah. Sounds like you were eight hours plus all in. 
Yeah, I'd, uh, watch some movies. All right, Sean, yours was much more straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I flew into John Wayne Mem- Memorial Airport, and it's, ah, shit, 15, 20 minutes from the venue and just a much smaller airport. And I got to say, that's what I'll be doing again. Yeah, I would if I could. Someone told me about that. Yeah, is it like a regional airport sort of thing, like a, like down at Michael's, or is it something else? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, no, it's definitely a smaller airport. Okay. Like for my return trip home, I got my flight there and then flew up to Seattle and then over. So let's talk about the show. That's kind of the what we're here for. What same kind of format that a traditional TKI show has? Well, same as he's been doing it, where you're kind of everybody's in for all. Okay. Um, what you know runs pretty smoothly. I think there's not really any rush to have to be in for stuff or. You know what I mean? Or people to get in or sign up or do whatever. So I've never been to one of Sako's TKIs. So why don't you explain what that means for people that aren't familiar versus in the past, people would enter on knives that they were interested in, but most stuff was, it was either lottery or open bid, right? Or closed bid or whatever, either bid up or lottery. Yeah. You have to have your lottery pieces. You know, you can have a bid up piece if you have a certain amount of lottery pieces. I think it's two or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's one for one. For, is it really? Shit. Yeah, that's um, a, uh, if, if that ain't how it is, I broke the rules. <laughs> oh, you're fine. But yeah, you basically everyone that buys a ticket to go to TKI, which is you know generally how the TKI works, um, they're automatically entered in all the knives, all the lotteries. So and then you basically get a random packet, you know, and it's got random, you know randomly drawn winners in it you just draw them and set them out and it's pretty easy peasy huh yep yep okay so if you're a buyer and you didn't want to be in necessarily on all the knives you're in anyway you just don't have to take it if you get picked on something yeah yeah Yeah, you just say i pass yeah okay not i'd be interested to hear how the customers like it you know whether they do or not i don't know yeah i know it's easier as a maker but I don't know if it's like awkward, but I mean, I don't know who r- would really know someone's number. You know, you have a lanyard with your number on it. Ah. You know, if you're standing there and you're like 17 or whatever, and they drew 17 and you're like backed away, that might be a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they go with the first number that, that was picked. And then if after a certain amount of time, someone doesn't claim or, or comes up and says, Hey, I'm out. Then they go to the next one. Yeah. Gotcha. Certain amount of time. Which always feel yeah. bad for like number two. Yeah. Right. Someone's on the sitting on the slow cooker waiting for to figure out whether they have an opportunity or not, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. To be like, oh, I almost won. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I've not been to one of those shows. I don't know how I'd like that as a buyer. I mean, the good news is it saves all of that stress of running around the room trying to make sure you get entered and stuff, right? So that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. There's definitely not, certainly not a thing where I'd be interested in every piece. They're all, all the work there is beautiful. It's just a matter of, are yeah. they makers that I collect or not? Or, Oh yeah. You know, and in, in generally in the past, you know, especially if you have like a, uh, oh, a system where you can tell what gets more, you know, you kind of lose a little of that data there. But if, you know, everyone's just going to be in for everything, even if, you know, they aren't made to, it doesn't really matter. But yeah. You know, it's always like to kind of know what more people gravitate towards versus, you know, not, but I mean, I only had two lottery pieces, so it didn't really matter that much to me. I gotcha. You're talking about makers paying attention to how many entries hit different pieces. Yeah. I'm always intrigued by that. Yes. Yeah. So, Same. and it's always like the one I don't think is the coolest. <laughs> yeah. Which I want to throw this out there. If you were a TKI attendee. Post in the Facebook group and let us know what you think of the way the TKI lotteries are done. Are you a fan? Are you indifferent? Do you not like it? Let us know. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. But I think overall, um, I think there's good attendance. I think uh, it seemed a little more exciting than there has been some in the past. Um, mm-hmm. Very. I don't know. It just it seemed a little more lively. I don't know if it's the... Everybody getting kind of back into the swing of things. I don't, 
I don't know all the reasons for it. The food was pretty good, you know? Yeah, it was. So I don't know. I, I, I thought it was uh, an enjoyable experience. Um, it did get confusing, you know. Yeah, the vibe like, was solid. I thought so. And some guy was like, uh, you don't ever do this show. I'm like, I no, I, I do quite a bit of TKI. I just, and he was like, no, I, I don't think you went to this last one. I'm like, I was like, oh, we finally realized he's talking about CCKS. You know, it's kind of like uh, all the TKIs kind of got mixed up. I'm like, wait a minute, has there been one here that I didn't realize about? Or I don't right. know. Yeah, I'll be honest. That schedule seemed kind of confusing. We'll get to that in a little bit, I guess. But the way it was kind of laid out, at least this year, it was like, wait a second. I don't know. It's just odd. Yeah. And I was actually supposed to go to, was originally going to go to the January one, but I got stuck in my hydraulic press times. Ah, uh, right, right. <laughs> Technically, I've been stuck in that ever since. Yeah. Uh, I wish you'd have said I had pressing matters. Oh. oh. Okay. So, um, show went good. How, how long, is it like an evening show, like the traditional TKI where it's mm-hmm. uh, only a few hours long kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. Doors open at six and the last bid knives are closed at 10 and then you've got to go home at 11 whether you like it or not. Nice. Yeah. I always liked yeah. that about TKI, that it was like an evening show, so you kind of got in there, you could, did your thing, and you got done, and then you could go do whatever else you were going to do. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that. I wouldn't mind sometimes it being a, I don't know, afternoon where you got go out with your friends that night or whatever, because it's kind of like it, it takes up the night. Yeah. But I get it. You know, it's, it is what it is. Right. And there was three hours of allotted fellowship time between makers before the show so they could get a bite to eat and stand around and talk shit at each other and whatnot. Nice, nice. Yeah, that part was nice. There's a lot of people I hadn't seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah, there were a few guys that I really got a chance to have a genuine conversation with, not just to we're hustling ass and see each other in passing and say, oh, hey, see ya, you know. Yeah. But actually have a genuine conversation with that was enjoyable, and that's always nice. Mm-hmm. But then I had three hours of being at the venue and feeling like I was going to jump out of my skin. So, eh. Right. Yeah, there's there's no way around that. The nerves are always going to be there, whether you're sitting in a hotel room or sitting, you know, there. I do, dude, there's a part of me that likes fucking jittering while I stare at a wall. I don't even know where the fuck that comes from. Now, I will say this. The hotel was nice. You know, the rooms were nice. But it's close to Disneyland. So it's a very, you know, a lot of families and stuff like that. And I went solo this time. So I'm just kind of like an old dude by myself, you know, and all these families around there. I'm like, well, this feel weird, kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Was it at an embassy suites? Is that where it was? Uh, No, it was, uh, what was it called? It was an embassy suites. I thought it was an embassy. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. That's where I it, thought it, it saw had, it on for next year. Or for for the California show or something. What is it like? Garden Grove Embassy, something like that. Yeah, by Hilton of the Anaheim South or something. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was wordy. All right. So this is uh, like has happened a number of shows over the years. Recently, anyway, have uh, evolved into this thing where TKI is the evening show on like a Friday or something. And then there's a regular knife show for the rest of the weekend. Is that the way this was as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the day after TKI was the California Custom Knife Show. Gotcha. Which I think that's been going on for quite a while, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, at least as long as I've been in the industry. Yeah, I, thought I remember so. it from back in the day. Right. Yeah, I think it kind of was around and then disappeared for a little while and got revived or something maybe. Mm-hmm. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. There was a, did have quite a bit of people talking about uh, the Portland show while I was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be pretty And hear me now and believe me later, it's going to be the show to be at. Yeah. So TKI was good. Uh, it sounds like uh, sales were good. Makers were all happy or customers seemed happy. I think so. You know, it, it's always, I don't know if there's any way around it. There's been a few TKIs that were kind of, that were more almost a uh, customer and maker get together where we all kind of hung out and did stuff. And you, 
I don't know, had more of a exciting party vibe, I guess, as part of it. And sometimes it's more of a, as a maker, you sell and you kind of watch, you know, everyone in the middle kind of doing the sales and trades and stuff like that. And so it's hard to tell because you feel like you're kind of looking in, if that makes sense. Yeah, I got you. Like, I'm, I'm, we're not part of that process anymore. We did our part and we sit back and kind of watch. You know, but that's also sometimes when you get to have good conversation with customers, you know, I talked to a few people for quite a bit about just the the whole Damascus making and all that fun stuff. What was, uh, what was the general response to your homegrown project that you were doing? People wanted to talk about it. It was, it was interesting. People were, um, excited about some of the weird stuff I've been making and, um, about the Damascus and. I don't know. I think generally they were pretty positive and a lot of compliments on the steel and I couldn't, couldn't be upset about that. Right. Nah, dude, you got a lot to be proud of with that knife. That's a gorgeous build. And the fact that it is so sole authorship is just fucking next level. Kudos, man. Kudos. Thanks. I appreciate that. No, no, dude. I'm a fan, baby. I didn't even talk to George about getting me some titanium, different titanium alloys for, uh, Making my own good stuff there. Ooh. Moku Michael. Can't get a, what's that? Moku yes, Michael. Virtue tie. Virtue tie, yeah. See if I can't get a hot score of titanium in my eyeball. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. Yeah, that's supposedly uh, not uh, not the easiest or the safest thing to be messing with. Yeah, I can only imagine. And so you're all in. Absolutely. <laughs> Sign me up, he said. All right. Sounds like it went well for you also, Sean. You had two lotteries in a open and a silent or something. How'd you do it? That's exactly how it went. Okay. And man, I couldn't be happier. I did way, way better than my sorry ass deserves. Okay. Any other uh, stuff from TKI? And then we'll switch to talking about the California show. Cause it sounds like maybe you spent some time there, Sean. Any other TKI comments or thoughts or observations? Any cool, super cool pieces that you wanted to point out? Well, yeah. Kirby Lambert was next to me. Kirby had beautiful stuff. Oh, he always does. And this, I think it was the first show he's gotten to come to in a while. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, so it's, uh, I don't know. I, I did just did a quick walk around and everything looked nice. You know, everything looked, you know, looked good. So, Sean, you went to the California show. You went to the show on Saturday, which is sort of more like a regular local or not local, like a regular knife show, right? A regular regional show. Yeah, a regular, we'll say a regular regional knife show. Yeah. And yeah, showed up there. Uh, from what I could tell, everybody was having a really good time. It seemed like the makers were doing well. I didn't see too many frowns. It seemed like a lot of commerce, a lot of bustle through the room, and that's what you want to see. So who all was there? I'm trying to think. Uh, I know Kevin Foster was there. I assume Mayo was there, or maybe he was at TKI or both. Uh, he, I, man, I saw him walking around TKI and I saw him hanging out with Kevin at CCKS. Yeah. But I don't know, you know, exactly what he was doing. Right. Cause he, I, he wasn't a TKI exhibitor. Okay. Okay. Our friend, Mr. Efros was there. Oh yeah. Had a nice talk with Brian. Always good to see Brian. He was at TKI. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 TKI, TKI. Gotcha. Which uh, Ian from CMF Metalworks really enjoyed seeing his work. He brought yeah. some really nice stuff. No, it was, it was that was I guess something I kind of forgot to talk about. There, seeing some new faces join in was kind of nice. Yeah, and deserved, man. Brian deserves to be there. Ian deserves to be there. Yeah, it was cool. Right. You, so um, I'm getting mixed up because we were talking California. So those guys were at TKI. Yeah. 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 I got mixed up myself. Uh, my bad. Me too. Right. So any, th- what else do we want to talk about with California show? Was there any good suppliers there? What was the, you know, as a maker, that's yeah. generally what I'm pretty excited about. Uh, man, I picked up some carbon fiber uh, called camo carbon. I'm going to give it a go. I got some in black on black and some in black on blue. I'm hmm. going to see how it shakes out. Where's that made from? I Dude, I didn't really ask. Just saw I just saw a new carbon I hadn't used and cabbaged it. Nice. Was there a lot of like, uh, 
Oh, first come, did you get there like first thing in the morning or? I got there was uh, about an hour and a half, two hours after the show started. Oh, okay. I was wondering if there was like a sort of first come, first serve sort of thing going on there like you see at some of the other shows or? Oh, there had to have been because I know guys started camping out for CC, CCKS after TKI closed for the night. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. It's always a fun sign. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, you, there had to have been a feeding frenzy when the doors opened. You know, people can love or hate that or have their thoughts on it, but man, it, it sure sets a kind of a fun vibe. Yes, it does. Man, it creates a excitement, almost a tangible feeling. Yeah, I much I much rather see a bunch of people excited about buying stuff than people just wanting to have a business transaction. Or just mope assing around for some reason. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, Sean, it sounded like you had some conversation with Sacco about the whole double TKI, what's going on for the future. It sounds like maybe he's got a plan there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I believe that there were, that the Las Vegas one went down this year because of pre commitments. Okay. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe that that had the most to do with it because next year there will be one TKI and it'll be happening on February 3rd okay. and then CCKS will be the day after February 4th. Okay. And then that's it for TKIs. There'll be a Friday night blade affair in October, but just one TKI. Did, uh, did you talk to him about how he may be doing it? Cause I don't know if I can say anything, but that it sounds like it could be really cool. No, no, I didn't. I, that's the information he gave me. He said that uh, it'll be your standard TKI format for the most part, somewhere between 15 and 20 makers, definitely never any more than 20, though. Okay. All right. Well, we'll save that for a later time then, but it could be some cool stuff. I might stuff not there. ask the right questions either. <laughs> well, I showed up on time when we were supposed to be there. Well, you did too. And we got to sit and for talk once. for a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, it... Uh, yeah, it could be fun. Different stuff. Things that make stuff exciting. There you go. Which I'm always a big fan of. Yeah. Me too, me too. Well, a little bit of novelty never hurts. Yeah, it shouldn't yeah. be a slog, right? No. no. Some, we've all been to TKIs where it's kind of felt like it sometimes. Yeah. You know, which is no fun. Yeah, so I'm looking at the website, right, like like Sean said, TKI in February, uh, California Spring Show, the day following but still at this same, it looks like all at this same venue. And then Friday Night Blade Affair, which was kind of Sako's take on a Solvang TKI-ish mm-hmm. kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, in the fall, in October, and then a fall California show right afterward. Interesting. So two California shows, one in the winter, one in the fall. Yeah. All right. Which I, I got to say, having it at the end of April in California, the weather was fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Man, it was a nice weekend. I bet. It was nice, you know? And February there would be a lot better than February here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. February in Ohio is fucking suck start a shotgun season. <laughs> yeah. Unfun. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else about California show, TKI, that we want to hit on? I think just overall it was it was, you know, done well, and I think people were happy, and... Like Sean said, you know, we want to hear what you all's thoughts are. You know, it's, that's yeah, what makes always. everything better. The beast of capitalism was fed and a good time was had by all. You know, sometimes we only hear people complain and, and some people are just okay with it and just don't say anything. So, yeah, just let us know. Good or bad. Yeah, good, bad, or indifferent. Right. So our Facebook group's a good place to do that, right? Easy easy interactions. Absolutely. Instagram's okay too. Facebook, whatever works for you. But let us know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're always interested in that feedback. All right. And then we had a very unfortunate passing, someone we've talked about on the show a couple times and I think probably have included in a future episode that hasn't released yet as well. Yeah. Michael, you want to talk about that yeah. a little bit? Yeah, uh, Joe Cordova passed away. Um, he was an ABS master smith. He did a little bit of everything. And we, we talk about this, this on a uh, episode that's not going to be released yet, but like hunters, tacticals, you know, fantasy style. Um, he worked with Bob Loveless for a while. I mean, 
you all have seen, whether you recognize it or not, you've seen some of his knives out there. You know, you may have handled some, you know, some of his collapse stuff and not knowing it, but sadly he passed away um, to us, I think it was last week. Um, I got to say, rest in peace. He was a, a great maker, um, friend to a lot of makers. Absolutely. Rest in peace and Godspeed, sir. Yeah, it seemed clear from the all the comments that we saw that he was a very well-loved guy by lots and lots of folks. Mm-hmm. Well, fellas, unless you got something else, I think that's it. I think that's it. Short and sweet on this one. Just like little TKI shows. <laughs> a little nugget. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that's it. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, so. Thanks, folks. <laughs> To learn more about our makers, you can find Tom Crine on the web at CrineKnives.net, in his Facebook group, Crine Knives, or in his Instagram account, at Crine Knives. For Michael Birch, check BirchTreeBlades.com, Facebook group, Birch Tree Blade Works, or Michael's Instagram, at Birch Tree Blades. For myself and the Raygun Bead Project, we're on the web at RaygunDivision.com. We have a Facebook group called Raygun Division, or my personal Instagram, at msteiner. For those interested in photos, references from the show, or some discussion about the show itself, you can find us on the web at markofthemaker.com, in a Facebook group called Mark of the Maker, or on our Instagram, at Mark of the Maker. Last but not least, the ultra-cool and haunting background music we use for the show is a piece called Noir Guitar by Stevie's Amp Shack found at the Free Music Archive and licensed under Creative Commons CC BY 4.0. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.